I'm going to open a document that uh, I've been working on here on the history of guitars. When I start editing a document, often I'll position my windows just the way I like them, like this, maybe open up some inspectors, position them the way I want them, and then I'll set down to editing. Now, this guitar, this uh, looks maybe a little bit too metal for my target audience, so I'll uh, delete that. Take, uh, take this, move it aside, maybe change the font here on this, uh, on this document. So I'm done with my edits for now, and I'm going to quit. And I want you to watch what happens when I quit. Absolutely nothing. I wasn't prompted to save. I didn't need to be because Lion was actually saving for me all along. But it wasn't just saving my document. It was saving exactly the state of how I was working. So now when I go back and launch pages again, you see it brings back all my inspectors just the way they were, brings back my window positioned where it was, and even has my text selection highlighted just as I left it. Perfect restore. But we're not just storing the latest version of the document. We're keeping a history of the document as it's edited. So if I want to go back, maybe I regret these edits, I want to get back to the previous version, I go right here and browse all versions. And I'm taken right into the star field where I get a view of my current version on the left and the history on the right. If I want this previous version to become current, I click restore, it picks up, flies on top, and becomes the current version of my document. And I'm restored. But you saw there was actually more history than that. I'll go back into the star field here. You can see I actually have a full timeline here. On the right, I can go back to the very beginning of this document when it was just a few paragraphs, or step forward as I was adding pages and so forth. But when I restore a document, you know, very often I don't want really the whole old version. I like mostly what my new document has become, but often I want to harvest maybe just an image or perhaps a particular slide and bring it into the current version. With versions, I can, because these two windows are actually live here. So if I have on my current version, maybe a page that could really use an image to punch it up a little bit, and I go back to this past version, I see, oh, look, there's, there's a guitar that would be just perfect. Well, I can just select the guitar in the old version, copy it, and then paste it right into the latest version. And like that, I've created just the document I was looking for. And that's versions. Thanks. Thank you, Craig. Next, number nine. For as long as we've had computers, we've wanted to share documents. We have a new feature to help you do that and make it easier than ever. It's called AirDrop. You've got your computer, your friends got their computer, and trying to get documents between them has always been such a pain. In fact, the easiest way to do this that no one's done better than is good old sneaker net. Copy it off of one, walk over to your friend's computer, copy it back on. Well, Lion solves that with a new technology, AirDrop, that's a peer-to-peer Wi-Fi-based network. So how does it work? When you go into the Finder in Lion, you'll see on the sources on the left, a new choice called AirDrop. You tap it, you get a new display inside the Finder. What you see is yourself, center, bottom right there, and the people around you who are also running AirDrop at the same time. You see their pictures. If I want to drag a, a document over to Shauna's computer, I just drag the document on top of her picture, and it asks me, are you sure you want to send this? And I confirm I do. On Shauna's computer, because she's also now running AirDrop, she sees, pops up over my picture, I'm trying to send her a document. She confirms she wants to receive it, and it downloads right into her downloads folder. And that's it. That's what it takes to now wirelessly share files between Lion computers. So it's a peer-to-peer Wi-Fi-based network, there's nothing to set up. It's auto discovery, auto setup. We have confirmation on both ends, just to be safe. And your data is protected over the air because it's fully encrypted as it's transferred. So that's AirDrop. And that brings us to number 10. <laughs> number 10 is Mail, a completely new version of Mail and Lion. It's beautiful. The layout on it is incredible. It works in a window. It takes advantage of full screen. You can work in a two-column, or if you want to have access to your mail sources, a three-column view right there on the left. And you see that the design of it is really optimized around reading your mail. You have a beautiful full-height message window. On the left, in the message list, you see snippets, like we're used to from iOS, now built into mail. Across the top, you have a favorites bar, sort of like a browser does. Now in mail, that can be favorite folders where you like to keep things and you want to get at quickly. Probably the most, one of the most powerful features is searching. 
with searching now, we have new search suggestions. So you start to type what you're looking for, and Mail recognizes whether that's a person or a subject and prompts you with the choices you have across your entire Mail database, what you can find quickly. When you select one, it becomes what we call a search token. And that's an interactive search token where you can set some parameters on it. And you can have more than one and create Boolean searches if you want. But probably the best feature of the new Mail is something we call, oh, yes, you can love that, it's okay, <laughs> Boolean searches. <laughs> probably the best feature is something we call conversation view. In Mail today, as you've got a conversation going, you've got some messages you've responded to or replied and forwards, so you see the mail gets longer and longer and they're indented and color-coded, things stripped out. It gets more and more difficult to follow the flow of this and appreciate the messages that were sent. Well now, in Lion, there's a brand new conversation view that shows your messages just as they were sent. You see the messages, you see the people who send them, you see the attachments still in line, all there for you to view. Yet it's completely compatible with doing email with other people who don't have Lion and can't get the same beautiful view. So that's Mail and Lion. I'd like to bring Craig up for one last demo to show off Mail. Okay. Well, I absolutely love the new Mail in Lion. Let's, let's take a look. So it's got this great full height message list. It's perfect for laptops, just like this. I've got my message list on the side with snippets, makes it really easy to find the message I'm looking for. We have this new favorites bar across the top, so I can click through my mailboxes really easily, but if I want to get back to my full list, they're available right here as well. I really find the new search to be just awesome, because when I search, I'm often searching for a person, let's say like Phil, I start typing PH, see it prompts me for people in my uh, mail right now that match, so I go Phil Schiller, found messages from Phil, just like that. I can use, I can retarget the search to specific inboxes or search all. And of course, as Phil showed you, I can pick whether I'm searching for from, to, or the entire message. Well, suggestions don't just apply to searching for people. They also work for other things as well. Like let's say a subject, I'll search for trip. You see that it's actually prompting me, do you want to search for messages that contain trip, or where trip just appears in the subject line, or even suggest specific subject lines that match. So I can select this, and I've done a subject search on trip. What about dates? I'm going to type March, start typing March. There you see it prompts me, March 2011. And like that, I've searched for all my messages in March. But what's really awesome is the way you can combine these really quickly to pinpoint just the search you're looking for. So let's say I'm looking for a message about that Phil sent me. It's the subject was something about reservation. It was from Phil Schiller, and it was last month like that drills down to exactly the message you're looking for. It's really nice. As awesome as that is, my favorite feature is conversations. It's this beautiful view of all the messages that were sent in the conversation just as they were sent with all the images and so forth. And you'll notice that all of that extra forwarded reply text that's redundant in the conversation is stripped right out. It's gone. But if I want to show it and I want to see mail the way it kind of looks in lesser mail programs, I can click like this. It folds right out. Yeah, this is awesome. And if I want to reply to a particular message in a conversation, I can hover. We get a reply control and watch this animation. Bloop. So <laughs> message hops right out. So that's great. And finally, when you want to file a whole conversation away, you can just drag it all at once drag all the messages, put it in your folder, and you're done. That's mail in Lion. Thank you. So those are the top 10 features of mail, and there's so, excuse me, of, of, of Lion, and there is so much more for you to learn about and discover in Lion. Amazing features, just to bring up a few. I mean, don't Windows users who want to upgrade to a Mac deserve a migration feature just like we Mac users have? Well, now there is in line. When you upgrade from Windows, we can help you migrate and get to a better computing experience. Uh, there's FileVault, too. Yeah, so for all of you who want more security and encryption in your hard drive, you have that. FaceTime's built in. Even servers all new with Lion. Server isn't another operating system. It's just a bunch of applications you can purchase to run on top of Lion. 
So amazing depth of features for you. And for all the developers out here, we have over 3,000 new APIs for you to take advantage of the power of Lion. Amazing stuff. You can do all the things we showed here. You can have full screen applications, you can create versions, you can take advantage of autosave. All of that can easily be done with all these new APIs. So Lion is an incredible new, new release. So how are we going to get it? Well, in the past, one thing every version of Mac OS X has shared in common is it came on an optical disk. No more. Now, Lion will be available only in the Mac App Store. And that allows us to make it the easiest upgrade you have ever seen. When it's ready, you'll go into the Mac App Store, and you'll see a page there where you can read about it, see screenshots, read reviews, and when you're ready, click Buy. And it downloads right onto your Mac and starts the upgrade process right there. So it's on the Mac App Store. It'll be about four gigabytes in size, about the same size as a single HD movie that you might download. It installs right in place, no more rebooting from an optical disk. And because it's part of the Mac App Store and the Mac App Store rules, it follows the same rules. When you purchase it, you can use it on all of your personal authorized Macs. You don't have to buy multiple copies. <laughs> That's Lion. I know what you're thinking. What should we charge for this? Well, what would you charge? Well, in the past, most major releases of, of Mac OS X have been $129. And I think there's a lot here for $129. But we love it so much that we want to make it available to even more people. So we're going to price it at just $29.99. Yeah. I was hoping you're going to like that. So when do you all get your hands on it here at the conference? We're going to have a developer preview, the latest developer preview available today for you to download and take advantage of everything you've seen up here. And for customers, when will it be available? In July. So very, very soon, coming in July. So that is Lion. That's the first for new products we wanted to tell you about today. The next product we're going to talk about is iOS 5. And to do that, I'd like to invite up Scott Forstall. Welcome. So I'm here to tell you about iOS 5. Before I get into the cool stuff, let me give you a quick update on iOS. As you know, iOS powers the iPhone, the iPad, and the iPod Touch. And to date, we have sold, wait for it, <laughs> over 200 million iOS devices. And that makes iOS the number one mobile operating system with more than 44%, 44% of the market. Now, the latest addition to the iOS family is the iPad 2, which is an incredible product, even thinner and lighter than the original. It comes in black and white. It has cameras in the front and back. It is an amazing product. And our customers just couldn't wait to get their hands on it. Or else they actually did have to wait to get their hands on it. <laughs> in the first 14 months, we have already sold more than 25 million iPads. We created a whole new category of device with the iPad and have sold more than 25 million. Well, the iPad 2 joins the iPhone and the iPod Touch for an incredible lineup of iOS devices. And we've got some great stores to go along with these as well, like the iTunes Music Store. We've already sold more than 15 billion songs from the iTunes Music Store. This, of course, makes it the number one retailer of music in the world. Next is the iBook Store, 